let me take a moment and thank some people for their comments. Um, Lynn from Lynn's Altered Arts, when I was talking about the newsprint, she says she uses the scribble pad from the Dollar Tree um, as her newspaper print. She says it's larger than, you know, our American size uh, eight and a half by 11, but she just trims it down and she says it goes through her printer beautifully. Uh, I'd like to thank Jez from Nigeza Creates. I'm going to use her tip from her last video on my quick tip Thursday. I asked for her permission. She said that would be fine because she had a fantastic suggestion on um, brittle paper. So anyway, let's get started on this video. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining me today at Wynette's Crafting Corner. So today is the start of a new journal. I'm always glad about that. So I think I told you in my last quick tip Thursday, I was going to be using Medieval Mirage's tall document style journal uh, French Rococo Rhapsody, Marie Antoinette, and Ladies in Waiting. So before I start any journal, I start thinking about the cover, the pages, kind of a combination. And for this journal, I decided I'm going to use this Amazon packaging paper. I like it because it's crinkly, has a good sound. The other thing is it is tall enough. I'm going to bring in my paper cutter and what I always do is I think about my pages. Okay, so I'm going to pull out one page of the kit. It's the document style. Okay, like I said, tall. And I've gone ahead and marked a line and that will fit in about like there. I'm going to bring it up. So I'm going to have some little um, area on the edge and I've got some area here. Now I've got a lot of area here that I think I'm going to keep because let me cut this out and I'm going to show you what I'm, why I'm going to do that. Now, my, this is not going to fit in my paper trimmer, so let me grab a ruler and mark it, and then I'll just use my scissors. So, it's funny how that's on the opposite side, that T ruler. It's just weird. And I bought it like that. I think it came like that. So, all right, let's just mark this. And then we'll just use scissors to cut that. Now I, I had, because I'm doing a, a document style journal, I had to rearrange my camera so that it would fit over the whole desk. So I do hope that my videos are all in frame because it's a new setup and so um, I just want to make sure. So what I think I'm going to do now, again, because I've got the size I'm going to use that's going to be fine. Lots of room still. I'm going to turn the camera off for just a second, lower it so you can see, and then I'll turn the camera back on. I don't want to make you guys dizzy. Okay, I'm back. And so like I said, when this fits in here like this, and it will all be covered, I'm still going to have a lot of room here, but I want to add more pages. So I start looking with what I have that are big pages. 
For instance, this here, I cut it down to size. This will be a nice center page for the journal. It is written in French. It was a little fragile when I folded it, so I added some of my faux uh, paper tape, or not paper tape, faux, uh, what's it called, uh, scotch tape that's been aged. I added that there, so that will fit nicely. I pulled out some old music paper, and it's kind of a neat paper. Look at it. It's almost fabric. So I've cut that down. And then I also have this vintage embroidery piece. And so what I'm going to do, I folded it so you could see this. But what I'm going to do is add on another piece of my paper. And this is from actually the regular size one. And I went ahead and did a little bit of um, distressing around the edge. And then I think I'm just going to have that fold up like that and not make that into a pocket. But I'm going to attach this here. And so I kind of need to mark where the glue needs to go. So I'm just going to put it about there. Once again, I'm going to take a pencil. And I'm going to just mark where my glue needs to go. Because I don't want to put too much. This idea came from my friend Rachel over at Roxy Creations. I saw her do this on a video and I thought it was brilliant. So I'm going to just add my glue here. And this is actually going to be turned into a big pocket that I will be able to add some antique documents in there for whoever is going to be the owner of this journal. So I'm going to just line that up there so it's even. Yeah. And I actually, because I do kind of, well, you can hardly see the line. But okay, so I've got that. Then I'm going to flip it over to the other side. And then I'm once again, again, once again, blah, blah, once again, <laughs> once again, add the glue here. I hope everyone is doing great. I'm doing fantastic. Um... My sweet little Miss Fiona stayed the night at my daughter's house yesterday, just as a sleepover. And my daughter had um, texted me at the night, you know, before they had all gone to bed and said, Oh, Miss Fiona was being such a good girl and what have you. But then this morning, my daughter called me. Oops, I need to put glue down at the bottom because it's going to be a pocket. But anyway, she called me and told me, well, Miss Fiona was a little naughty during the night. She chewed up some of their drip system to their yard. And then she was whining at my grandson Gavin's bedroom door during the night. You know, she's used to sleeping with me, so I think she wanted to... You know, sleep with someone. So he let her in, and that little stinker peed on his floor. And she's totally house trained. I was shocked that she had done that. So my daughter called me this morning, and like I said, she said, uh, When you take Pascal, which is my son, to work, can you come pick up Fiona? <laughs> I was like, Oops. Okay, so like I said, that's going to be a nice little pocket. So what I'm going to do is put a notch in the top. And because I distressed it already, 
when you look in there, see I'm so finicky, I want it to be absolutely perfect. Um, when I, when you look inside the pocket, then it's going to look a little distressed. I need to do just a tiny bit at the, where I punched it on both sides. So isn't that going to be a fun page? Yeah. So it'll be a sewn in the journal here, and then it'll be a nice little pocket. So we're going to set that off to the side. I had done another one already. This is with some um, ledger from 1898. I'm going to be putting together some ledger packs. It will include some of my Italian ledger, but I think I last count I had like 20 different ledgers. Some of them are small, some of them are, are big. Uh, this I even had to uh, fold it into like a little pocket. I'm going to trim that off too or punch this little notch here. Um, but I'm going to put together some ledger packs for you guys and I'll put them in my Etsy store. Come on. Oh shoot. That just hardly wants to wants to uh, print because I should have, I've sh I mean, not print, punch, because I should have done it prior to taping this little pocket down. But anyway, I did another pocket there. And then I printed, or coffee dyed, ugh, boy, get your words out there, sister. I coffee dyed some just paper and this is bigger than the United States paper. This is I think 11 inches by 17 inches and then I did trim it down and it is a, a with a French stencil I used. Okay and so let me use my bone folder here to and I kind of had already come in and trimmed it down again. This is the journal that's going to fit in there perfectly. And see, I'm still going to have some room. I may, once I kind of do everything, I may have to trim this off. It may be a little bit too wide. This is another stencil I have. It's got French writing there and then some floral things there. So anyway, so Miss Fiona is back home, and I don't know what her deal was. Bless her little heart. I missed her, though, last night. It was, you know, she always follows my every step. Everywhere I go in the house, she's right there with me. And it was weird last night not having her with me. So that's going to be a pretty page in there. And then I've got these... French, like um, they are embroidery letter and, and patterns, but the paper is really, really fragile. You can see it's tearing there. But I did pull one page, and I'm going to show you what I did is I just glued on the back of it a piece of ledger. So you're going to have a lot of space to journal on. And then on this side, you can see it's from France. You're going to be able to see the embroidery of the letters. And what I've decided to do is I'm going to put this like this. Let's see. Let's double check to make sure I did trim it down. No, I didn't trim it down. So let me do that real quick. I'm going to put the video on hold. I'm going to have to... Ugh. I want to keep this here. I'm going to have to... I'm going to probably trim there. Oh. Duh, that will work perfect. I'm going to trim right across there, so I'll be right back. Okay, so I trimmed it down to its so that it's smaller. However, 
because I folded it where the fold line already was on the journal, I've got too much room uh, over here, so I need to fold this in. So let's see what it looks like. I don't like it that way. I prefer it like this. Do you see why? Okay, if I fold it like that, well, it still would work. Either way, it will work. I'm going to go this way. So I line it up so that it's about where the edge of the journal will be. And then I'm just going to fold No, I've decided I'm changing my mind again because as I was looking at the writing, I want to see all of the writing. I know there's, you're probably thinking, well, does it really matter? Yeah, it kind of does to me. So if I put this like this and fold that and then use my bone folder to crease that. As it's in the journal then this will be sewn in right there and then this will flip out if I need to so let's see what else I need to do now the next thing I do is I pull out the pages that are going to be in the journal and I lay them out so that I see somewhat of a color scheme. Again, I know there are wonderful and very talented journal makers that have the knack for having their journals flow without matching so much, but I like mine to match a little bit. I don't have the eye to do them any other way. So I've laid out all my papers. Then I bring in my fabrics that I feel are French inspired. Now, I already made a journal out of this fabric, so I'm gonna say no to that. I have this fabric, which I think it's okay. It would work. It looks a little modern to me against these pages. Same thing with this one. This is French, got France and Paris. That would actually maybe work. I could use it for some flips and flops and stuff like that. This fabric here I think it's kind of got like French writing. My sister Carrie gave this to me. That would work too, but I do have two pieces of fabric that I think I like better. One is, to me, it's still French inspired. The furniture looks very old and of that time period. It's got some blues, it's got some pinks, and thank goodness I have enough to cover it. So that's one option. The other option I have is this fabric, and it's, it's very similar. And again, I have more than enough of it. So I'm gonna sit down and figure out which one I'm going to use, and then I'll be back with you guys. I ended up deciding on this fabric because it's thicker, and I just thought it would work better. So what I've done is I've just lightly attached it with a little bit of uh, glue stick. But I... Again, want to show you my full process so that you can kind of see the things that I've learned over the years that I've making journals. So as I put that on there, I thought, okay, I want to go to my sewing machine and I want to sew this down. 
but I also have to think about what I want on the inside. And so I did cut my fabric larger than I need. Now what I've decided for the inside is this. And I'm going to show you it, this paper here. Now, this is absolutely incredible paper. It's from a French music book. I wish I knew what year because I can't see it, but it's definitely rag paper and old. It's, it's not from a new music book and I love that it says Paris on there. So I grabbed a couple of sheets of it and it's going to go on the inside of the journal. And I thought to myself, okay, so what do I need to do first? And I realized that I don't mind this showing. It will be trimmed down. But before I go sewing, I need to adhere these down ever so slightly. And I'm just going to use a little bit of Fabri-Tac on the corner and bring it down like that and hold it in place. The reason being is you want to make sure your edges are covered. Back in my early days when I first started making journals, occasionally I would forget about that and my edge would be exposed and then I'd have to come up with another idea on how to cover it. And lace is a great, great idea. Takes a little bit for this to adhere. I might just put a tiny bit here and hold that down. And so I'm going to go around and do all the edges. And again, even a little bit on the edge because the paper is going to cover the glue. If you look real close here, okay, do you see how that's kind of wet looking there? You will see that in the journal, in the final journal. And to me, I think when I was cutting pages or something, I said, you know, something about, you know, that's a small detail, but that matters to me. And even though this is a junk journal and it can be very eclectic, to me, it's those small details that make a junk journal not so junky looking. I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to hold these down. I am going to sew around it. Oh, but another thing I thought about. Okay. Let's just real quick hold that down and let me tell you what else I was thinking about. So as I was thinking about sewing it, I thought to myself, okay, this is the way, oops, that's a little, little critter there. This is how the front is going to look. And I see a little bit of the barcode there. So I thought, well, I got to cover that. So I folded it ever so slightly and I just looked at the front and I thought to myself, okay, now, Looks a little plain. It needs something else. So I went digging through my lace and before I sew, 
I thought, okay, it needs a little bit of lace there. Now that looks pretty like that, yes. But when I fold it, you don't see, that's about half, you don't see a lot of the lace. And I'd like to, I think, see a little bit more lace. So I went looking through my stash and I found this lace. And let's just try it. I like that it's the same on both sides. I have a pretty good quantity. Who knows where I got it from? I don't know. But let's just take a look and see what that will look like now. If we put it about center, let's see, I think that's about center. It, and actually, it might help if I just take these pins and pin it down. It would be easier for me to flip it over and uh, fold it in half so I can see what it looks like. Okay, that's pinned in both sides. So let me grab it. And as I fold it over, I like that you see a little bit more of the lace. Let's look at the other side. Now see, it's not center, so centered, excuse me. So some of this lace needs to come over this other way. So I will finagle with that, pull it over before I sew it. And the other thing I will do is I will attach it down ever so slightly with a little bit of the fabric tack to hold it in place because I want this here before I sew the front cover. So I'm just going to pull it over to where it looks like it's more centered and attach that. And then once again, what do they say? Measure twice, cut once. Same thing with this kind of stuff. Does it look good? Is it even? I think I've got more up here than more down there, but it's not bad. So I'll finagle with this, get it glued down, and then I'll be back with you guys. So I took this to my sewing machine and I did a zigzag stitch all around the edge to hold it in place. And this is what the front looks like. And then I did a zigzag stitch down both sides of the lace as like say for instance, so I had it folded here and I could see that fold line. So I did my machine stitching on this side so it would be even. So when I close the journal cover, there's a fairly even line here, and I love the way that looks. Now, this is not attached yet, and I'm going to leave it that way. We'll see what that looks like. So now let's think about the inside cover. And what I was thinking is I want to see this flute solo showing and I it's the same written on both sides so if I lay this here center it there and see that there if I just bring it up right where that line is and I'm gonna have this paper go all the way to the edge of this, I think. Hmm. So now again, more, more thinking, more deciding. But before I 
finally decide I am going to trace this because I don't need the full amount and I can always trim a little bit more if I need to. So I'm just going to draw a line there with a pencil because if I need to I can erase this pencil. So even down at the bottom here. I love this paper. Okay. And then see, we can see that there. So I think what I'm going to do is tear this. And it looks about even on both sides. Let's see if this paper will tear. Sometimes you got to be a little bit, oh, see, it's, it's tearing there, so I don't want that. And I may need to reinforce that, but I'm going to go ahead and tear this down, and then I'll be back and show you what it looks like. Okay, I've torn it down, and aren't these lovely scraps? Ooh, we love scraps, don't we? So let's see what this looks like. So that's the correct orientation. Let's bring this in. I'm going to center it. And as I look at that, I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe I want some of this to be seen. I think I do. So what I'm going to do is trim it more because I like that stitching. So I'm going to trim it to where it will glue right along there just before that stitch line. And I'm going to go ahead and glue that in there. I think it looks just a little bit too plain that way. And I also need to remember that it, when it folds out, it's going to uh, push out a little bit. So, again, always think, refold, look, plan, um, go smaller or go larger, then you can always go smaller if you need to. What I decided to do is I put double-sided tape along here, and then I'm going to pull it off just a little section and I'm doing this prior to cutting my paper. So I'm just going to lay it in there. Make sure I've got plenty of room. Make sure it's right in there and then fold it over so that that sticks. And then it's held down at least on that one side right where it it folds and now I'm going to put a little bit of double-sided tape here on this side. And again, I'm going to go below this stitch line here. And then just cut right there. And then peel it off. And you see both these areas that I will probably tear off are not adhered down. So now I'm just going to fold this over and put that down. Except for it didn't stick. <laughs> I just need to hold it a little bit more. Okay, so now then what I can do is just kind of turn this up. right where I want it to be cut or torn or whatever I'm going to do. 
and then it will look a little bit more even. So I'm going to go all the way around and I might even just leave that because I do like that kind of torn edge. I'm going to see. We're going to see. So I'll go around and do all that and then I'll come back with you guys. So I ended up not leaving that piece that was folded over. But this is another quick tip. It's not quick tip Thursday, but I'm going to show you this little tip. So I'm a little, I'm going to glue it down, but I'm a little worried that the glue might show through. So just take a small piece of scrap, put some glue on it, hold it down, and then see if you can see that glue come through. And it looks like that paper is thick enough so it's not going to happen. So that's good. So next I'm going to apply glue all along here and put that down. But maybe I should use Fabri-Tac just because on some of these edges here it's going to be next to the the fabric. So I'm definitely going to make sure it's along the edges. And I was, um, after I finished putting this down, I noticed my fingers were black. I don't know if the paper is dirty or some of this ink is coming off of here. I don't know. So I'm just going to run Fabri-Tac around and up and down all sides, especially in these corners. Although, again, as I'm, you know, processing and thinking about this as I'm putting glue here, there's going to be a pocket or something in he up, up here, you know, on this page. It's not going to be left plain like that. Okay, so then let's do the other side. So in between this video, I had gone outside. Oh, it's already hot here in Arizona. It's, it's way into the mid-90s. So I ran out to my garden to kind of look at it, and I pulled off a couple of little tomatoes and came in, washed them off, added a little salt to them, and had those as a little snack. Uh, my vegetable garden, as it heats up more and more as the summer moves along here, it will produce less and less because it just burns up. It's just too hot. Now, if I'm lucky, I can keep those plants alive. I will still water it, because if you can keep those plants alive through the, the summer, in the fall, I'll be able to trim them back, like the tomatoes and such, and uh, they'll just, they'll start producing again. Okay, I think that's good enough there. So that is glued down now. I probably should take my bone folder and really press that down. And remember, that's where we're going to sew our signatures. So because this is kind of plain, I might add something there. You never know. Said as the process of making a journal evolves, you come up with different ideas and what have you. So anyway, that is the start of my tall French journal. I'm loving how the the covers turning out. I love how it feels. I'm not sure yet about, did, did you see what I told you about? The black coming off. I'm not sure about a closure yet. I could put a Tim Holtz 
you know, some kind of attacher there. There's still time for that. But anyway, that's the end of this video, I think. Um, but I will see you guys next Monday and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks so much. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.